culture editor, Jade Barker. Hello, Jade. Hi, Claire. So the Louvre is on the move. It's uh, opening up uh, an offshoot uh, in Abu Dhabi next year. But people here in Paris have managed to get a preview. Yeah, that's right. Uh, to entice visitors and art critics, the Abu Dhabi, or soon to be Abu Dhabi Louvre, has uh, unveiled some of its collection here at the Paris Louvre. Now, uh, it was at an event hosted by French President Francois Hollande, no less. Uh, and there's more than 160 treasures covering three millennia that are, will be on display here in Paris until the end of July so you can get a bit of a taster for what is in store. Now, the Emirate of Abu Dhabi has spent around $55 million a year buying pieces to fill up the museum, uh, from ancient Egyptian objects through to French Impressionist paintings. And visitors also get to see uh, the Paris Louvre. They get a bit of a uh, taster of what the Abu Dhabi Louvre will look like. It's um, a model of a giant dome designed by Jean Nouvel. It will be on display. Uh, and it's all really, it's all part of this partnership that started back in uh, 2007 between the two countries. The ruling family of Abu Dhabi wanted to draw on the French expertise, they said, in building and maintaining world-class museums. Now, Hollande himself at the event today said that this is the biggest cultural partnership that France has ever had internationally. Uh, and this is what he had to say. For la France, le musée Louvre Dhabi... For France, the Abu Dhabi Louvre Museum is an extraordinary work in progress. It's the biggest cultural project we have abroad, a symbol of the close partnership that unites us with the UAE. We also have political links, diplomatic links, economic relations and a French military presence in the UAE. And now we have this cultural link. Okay, Jade, from art to music, uh, tomorrow is International Jazz Day. It is And uh, this year's host city is Osaka in Japan. It's not normally a city that springs to mind when you think jazz. Why was it chosen? Well, actually, interesting enough, it is a city that is quite synonymous with jazz. It's, it has quite a long history with it, which dates back to the 1920s. And it really played a leading role in, uh, in spreading jazz throughout Asia. Um, now, it's, not, it's, it's International Jazz Day, so as you would expect, there's events taking place all over the world, not just in the host city, Osaka. 196 member countries are part of this event. Um, now, the aim is to rekindle the public's interest in jazz. And the event actually kicked off here in Paris uh, about three years ago in 2011, uh, which is hardly surprising, really, because even though Osaka might not spring to mind, I think Paris really does when you think of jazz. The question is, why? I mean, we don't think we really... I can think of a few jazz cafes. Uh, yeah, if you, well, everyone knows there's jazz cafes and there is this history, but why? Well, Catherine Gillum has been finding out. Few cities in the world are more associated with jazz than Paris. Most of the genre's greatest names all came to play in the French capital time and again. The mostly African-American musicians attracted to the City of Light and its more relaxed racial attitudes. Some, like Archie Shepp, even chose to move here permanently. Many uh, black musicians uh, are here in Europe uh, as much as they are at home in the United States because there are so many more opportunities to, uh, to perform here. And this music is uh, appreciated uh, here uh, in a way that it's not in the States. It isn't just jazz musicians that have been welcomed to France with open arms. Afrobeat singer, songwriter and Grammy nominee Femi Kuti credits France and his invitation to play at the Angoulême Festival for the start of his international career. France became like the mecca of um, accepting all kinds of music. First African music, everybody was um, being exposed through France. Overseas artists benefit from their exposure in France. In exchange, foreign influences has helped local jazz change and evolve over the years. French jazzman Ibrahim Malouf is a case in point. He successfully used his family's Arabic origins to create his own unique sound, winning Artist of the Year at the French Jazz Music Awards only last year. Uh, uh, respect 
In France, there's a lot of respect for jazz and for jazz mixed with other musical genres. France has always been a welcoming country, and so there is a musical catalyst. Jazz culture is still vibrant in France almost a hundred years after it was first imported. The country now has 2,600 registered jazz musicians and 400 dedicated festivals. Right, Jade, we're going to wrap things up uh, with a retrospective of an Italian artist that's taking a place here in Paris at the Museum of Modern Art. Lucio Fontana is considered uh, one of the great visionaries of the 20th century, but he never became a household name. Why is that? Well, the curators of this exhibition says it's because of his unsettled and eclectic work, which covers things from sculptures to drawings, paintings, and mosaics. But it's really hard to say because he really profoundly influenced uh, artistic superstars like Yves Klein and Cy Twombie and he's considered by many as uh, one of the predecessors of contemporary art. Uh, the exhibition itself, if you want to check it out and see why he's got this reputation, uh, it highlights his non-conforming and ever-changing style with over 200 of his works on display. Okay, thank you very much Jade. That's it for culture. We're going to move on now to our sports roundup, including a look at